We could start now that you're here. Welcome, everyone. Uh, is this a first time for some of you here? Yes. First time, yeah. All right, we did a couple. John did a couple of these uh, in the last month. We thought we would do one today that's a little bit more specific. And we're going to talk today about the return of serve. So you two young ladies in the front, what do you think is important about the return of serve? Split step and keep your back swing sure. See, they've been paying attention. Yeah. Eliana, what do you think? Know when, to be know when to be aggressive. Okay, that's something I want to talk about today. And we're going to show all points from some women's matches because we wanted you two especially to feel comfortable today. Okay, we're going to show some women's. But we, this is going to be something that we can talk about, whether it's male, female, it doesn't matter. So the first match we're going to look at... <clears throat> is between Angelique Kerber and Caroline Wozniacki. This was not this year's U.S. Open, but last year. One, one second before okay. we get to the points. Okay. This is also like a forum for the parents, uh, as well as the kids, an opportunity. Specifically, we're using the return to serve as a weapon, and we've got other ideas that we want to push out, the serve, etc. But this is an opportunity to ask questions as well about the program in general. It's not completely and utterly about return to serve as a weapon because at this particular age, the ladies I see here, and for most people, until you get to be a lot older, it's difficult to have the return to serve as a major weapon. I mean, uh, let's just be clear. The number one goal of the return to serve is to make sure it goes in the court. And then you have to decide how much risk you want to take on a return of serve. Because the bigger risk you take, the higher odds are you're going to miss it completely. Well, that doesn't do you any good. So we, while we're trying to show you, in particular with the women, but also with the men, that the return of serve has become more important than ever. It has become almost as important as the serve. That there's certain let's say phases you've got to go through. Uh, it's like a pyramid. You've got to, you know, split step is one of the many things on the court and, and Patrick. So I go even further back, but we used to use wood rackets when, we, when I first started playing. So the return to serve wasn't thought as, as, as something that you would uh, attack, you know, more or less you were blocking the ball back. You're just making sure you're getting the ball in the court. And you're setting yourself up, which in a way is still what you want to be doing. I don't want to see 8-year-olds, 10-year-olds, 12, 14 for that matter, unless they have an extremely high probability of it going in to go for you know, outright winners. Um, as the game has evolved, obviously, over the course of the last, well, I've been doing it 50 years, you see the technology of the sport changing a great deal. There's now um, much bigger rackets with a lot more power, and in addition to that, you've got strings uh, that uh, are allowing players to hit with a lot more spin. So because of that, uh, there was players over the course of the last, well, it's been a good 20 years. I played a guy by the name of Jimmy Connors who started with a, a steal. Basically, can you serve better than this guy returns? And most players couldn't do that because he's got a phenomenal return. Now you've seen maybe Novak Djokovic, in my opinion, who's got the greatest serve in the history of the sport. Greatest return. Greatest return, excuse me. Um, and you've got plenty of women and uh, unbelievable returns. Serena's obviously one, but even the players we're going to be showing, Kerber for different reasons, like um, Wozni, uh, uh, the top players, uh, you can name, go down the list of the people, the top players in the list. And because, you know, generally speaking, the women don't serve as big as the men, arguably it's a more important shot in the women's game than it is in the men's game. And so uh, this is why we've decided in this particular form to focus on the return, just give you a couple ideas while you watch a return of ways to attack the, the, the serve um, and ways to set yourself up if the return isn't a winner to where to position yourself, uh, to try to intimidate players, you know, how it can pay off if you continually give a lot of pressure. So in essence, that is what we're going to be talking about. We're going to be showing you a few points. We'll explain why we showed these points. Thank you. And there's also some time. We're going to take this to about six. So if you choose, there's other things. If you want to ask something, how does that apply to this program or other programs or other questions you may have, you feel free to ask. 
All right, so uh, let's start out with this first point from Kerber, who's serving here to Wozniacki. Uh, let's let it go here, Perry. Misses the first serve, so what's Wozniacki going to do on the second serve return? Time out. Hold on, time out. Oh, excuse us, we're watching it, but you're not. Hell of a serve. <laughs> <laughs> we thought we had it here and here. So, you know, while we're, while we're getting this ready, um, court position is extremely important with return. And there's different ways to return. You, uh, you can attack it, you can use your opponent's pace to block returns that can be effective as you'll see in one of the shots uh, we will show right. but anyway let's go with so this here's one a first. second serve so to John's point Wozniacki is playing a lefty right so she we're focusing here that let's stop it so um, the what we're looking at here is that Kerber uh, it's a little bit better on the forehand side. So Wozniacki, as you'll see on most of the res returns, is trying to direct it to her backhand side off the return. So let's, see that again? yeah, let's see that one again, please. So again, she misses the first serve, and then she takes a couple of steps forward, and look how she's, look, she's more towards the middle of the court because she knows the left-hander probably not going to beat her out wide to her forehand. So she gets on top of that point. Let's go to the. So why would she stand there? Anyone have any questions as to what? It's easier to attack. It may be easier to attack uh, because of the angle of where you're standing and you know where you're going to hit the ball. That'll allow you for a higher percentage shot, even though you're being more aggressive. And she's not hit. You know, you know, a second serve is not going to be as hit as hard. Because if you hit it harder and miss it, you double fault it. Where was she? Uh, where did she hit the return? Did she try to hit it in the corner or on the line? Let's go back and watch it again. Let's watch where she hits this return. We're going to see the first serve missed. We're going to see her get ready. So let's see if she's got a sort of an aggressive position. So did she try to hit it to the corner? No, she hit it pretty deep and basically kind of down the middle, but making sure she hit the backhand of her opponent. So to be able to do that, obviously you have to have pretty good control and be able to know beforehand where you want to hit it. So she saw she moved out of the way. Let's see it one more time, the second serve. We, we get to see the first again. So watch how she wants to, she has a better backhand, Wozniacki. She's, she likes her backhand more. So watch how she moves out of the way, make sure she hits it on her backhand. All right, let's go to the next point. This time, let's, let's, let's freeze it here, let's go back. So the let here, so let's stop it here a second. So let's note, also we want to look at what the score is, right? So the score is, Kerber's leading 4-1 in the set, and it looks like it's 15-40. Let's let it go. 15-40. So it's a break point. Good point. Wow. Oh, she got it finally. That was a winner. All right, let's let's pause it. So, what do we what do we notice about that point? She went for the line. She went for what? The line. She went for the line. Who went for the line? On the return. What? After, After the point. You mean she went down the line, or she tried? Yeah, how many times do you, did they go cross court before they went down the line? A lot of times, right? Because so this is this point to me is about not just the return. She hit the forehand cross court on the return. Where do you think is a better, a safer place to go based on also what John's saying about being consistent on the return? Sasha, where's the where's the best place to return? Cross court. All right, so let's see. The, watch the point again. Start at the beginning. 
So there she's going, nice like cross, it's a lap. She went cross court, she's gonna go cross court again on the return. Let's count how many times they hit the ball cross court before they go down the line. There's the first one down the line. There's another one down the line. And there's another one. There's the winner. All right, stop it. What's that? I got 10. You got 10? Nine. Nine, nine, 10. The point is that it was a lot, right? So you said right at first, you said, it was, it, yeah, she did hit a winner down the line, but after a long point. The point is also a point like that. It doesn't mean automatically that uh, you're, it's the points over. Nor do I think. We're going to do a couple more from Wozniacki returning, then we're going to show Kerber returning, which I think will illustrate what she does a little bit better. Let's show the next point, Perry. This is Kerber's now serving for the match. She's up 6 4 5 2 at this point in the match. Remember, this was the year she won the U.S. Open. So there's another, that's a more aggressive return there. And she win, wins the point with the return. So should we watch, let's watch that again. So she still hit it to the same part of the court, but she hit it a little bit harder. And second serve coming. She's going to move in again. And watch, she's a little more aggressive. So she, did, she, did she hit that one from the ones you remember before a little bit wider on the return? A little bit, right? But not a lot, but just a little bit and a little more aggressively, and then she won the point automatically. So let's go to, um, let's move ahead to when Kerber's returning, Perry. Let's go to that. All right, now let's watch Kerber return. Here comes the second serve. So watch her position. Look where she's standing, because she, let's freeze it there. Stop it there. See where Cher's position is? Because she's left-handed, right? And she knows her opponent's right-handed. So, remember Wozniak was a little more towards the middle. Now Kerber, she's, almost, she's halfway in the alley. Because she's, uh, she's um, predicting that the serve's going to come probably towards her backhand side, right? Because it's going to be like a slice. So these are things that you guys got to think about when you're playing your match, when you're playing a first serve or a second serve. Okay, let's watch it. Let's let it go now. What did anybody? What did anyone think about that return? More aggressive. More aggressive. Well, it was also, um, I believe, what you want to do in tennis is, and I say this all the time when I'm here to the kids or whoever will listen, is you want to make the match or point as easy as possible for you and as difficult as possible for your opponent. You want to try to stay ahead in the point. Um, Sometimes you're going to go for more chances on depending on what the score is. Uh, you may have the luxury of being up a break and then it's love 40 on their serve, so you may go for a bigger, there's a good time to take a chance to get a double break. So you've got to play the score as well. But what happened in this point is, is that she sort of got ahead. She got her on her heels a little bit off the return and she sort of, you know, measured the next two or three balls until she got the error. So, she, you know, Wozniacki started to get a little bit um, unsettled because she was, you know, not liking the fact that the, what, what the score is. And in addition, she felt like she was playing too much defense. So this is what you want to do is you sort of make it, you don't need to go for too much, but you feel like you're pushing them around a little bit or getting them on the run. Isn't it better when you're watching them run and you're standing and they're hitting it right back to you? <laughs> yeah, that makes a whole life a whole lot easier. So you, you're hitting <laughs> shots on the run or you're stretching for a return, you know, that's more difficult. So that's why Patrick was talking about court positioning. Righty's slice goes out that way. So you've got to move over to not allow that to take place. You've got to sort of look at every part of the court as some sort of G a mathematical equation. You know, what are the odds of 
that person hitting the return, that's why Patrick's talking cross court. Well, the odds are higher because the net's lower. So it's easier. So you know that if someone takes a ball up the line, they're taking more of a chance generally, because why? Ava. The net, what? No, because the net is how many inches right at the sideline. Tell me how many inches it is when you try to rip a ball up the line. I'm going to tell you, <laughs> 39 inches. You want to know how much it is in the middle where the strap is? How many inches do you think it is? <clears throat> you think it's more or as, less? As it goes back. Less? Yeah. So the sideline, 39 inches. Other sideline, 39 inches. Middle of the net, how many inches? If you had a guess. How much? 30? 36 inches. 36. So it slopes down very, so there's a three inch difference. So you can just imagine for all of us, I don't care if you're the number one in the world, you're out there, you know, hitting from four to six or six to eight on Sunday. It's all, the same for everybody. So you've got to sort of keep that in mind when you're hitting shots, that you got a little bit more to work with if you go cross court. That's why the safer shot is cross court. All right, let's go back to that return again. And I want you to tell me the, the last point, the last point. T tell me the difference between Kerber's return and Wozniacki's returns that you saw earlier. So let's watch this one again. All right, stop it right there. No, you go. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. So what was the difference between her return and the ones we saw earlier from Wozniacki? More angle. Okay, that's what I want. Was that what you were going to say? More angle. As John said, she was hitting it over the lower part of the net. And if you're hitting it cross court rather than down the line, do you think you have more court or less court to work with? Yeah, because well, there's much more space, right? All right, let's go to the next point. So now it's Kerber's. She still has to, it's a, it's a very next, next point. I don't know, it's later in the game. So she's up 15 30 now. It's so like John said, she's got a nice lead. So she's trying to just keep the pressure on Wozniacki. She hasn't even won a game yet. Oh, all right. All right, well, hold that for a sec, Kara. Why did I? This has nothing to do with the return of serve on that particular case. Why did I decide, or Patrick, both of us decide to show that point? It was more aggressive? No. This may not be easy for you to come up with. So even parents, you know, chip in to help out <laughs> these poor kids. This is a bit of a, nothing to do with the return. Want to replay? Replay, Replay one, more, one time. more time. Here we go. Like first of this. Any guesses? Sasha's got one. That is almost <laughs> exactly right. Because what happens often, even with top, I mean, right now Wozniacki is uh, three, three in the world, and yeah. Kerber finished last year number one in the world. So everyone, I mean everyone, does this, which is sort of A, assume, B, hope that that ball's going out and not get yourself in position to hit it even though you pretty darn well could have been there pretty easily, but you sort of, you're praying a little bit. 
God, I hope that, oh my God, it's in. Well, guess what? The points, suddenly you're in some big trouble. So to me, especially when you're younger and you got all, you're getting stronger and you got so much energy and you're so fast. I remember when I could run way back when, get yourself into position. You get there yourself in position, you're about to hit, they call it out, beautiful. You don't have to worry about it. But you don't want to have any egg on your face and not be in position. So just make sure that you're there and, and don't let uh, points slip away for that reason. All right, next one. Oh, this one we just saw. So next, oh no, this is different. Okay, well oh, that's a, she missed Start it. Heel. We can just go to the next one. Let's go to the next one, yeah. So now it's game point for Wozniacki. What do we notice about that point? Anybody else notice anything about that? Yes, Ava. Wang went up, yeah. She turned the she turned the she made it from um advantage to her Right, so she turned defense to offense. Is that what you were trying to say? Now, let me ask you a question about the return. There's a couple of times you said earlier she was being aggressive. Do you think she was being aggressive on that return? Is that the first, something that came to your head? It didn't really come to my head. Let's watch it again. Let's just watch the return again. Let's watch it. Okay, stop it. Did she hit it hard? No, but look where Wozniacki is. So she hit it with a nice angle. All right, so look look at that. There's where her leg went up, Ava, you were right. Do you think she it went up because she hit it hard? Because it was an angle, right? Okay, so now she's got her, so right right away she's in an off, she knows she's in an offensive business. Watch what she does with this next shot. Okay, freeze it there. See, she takes it early. You know, we practice that a lot, right? Taking it on the rise. Does she try to hit it, take it on the rise and hit a winner? No. Okay, let's see what she does. She keeps her on the run. Oh, that's pretty good, right? Good. Again, when she went for the finishing shot, let's watch it one more time and let's watch where the shot, her last shot lands. Look where, look where, look where it lands. It landed just a little bit past the service line. But because she had her opponent out of position, she didn't even hit it even close to the line. But it was a winner, All right? Okay, let's keep going. Continue the point? Can, yeah, the well, next point. I think that might be oh, it. Well, that's it for, that's uh, it for that one. Okay, so new match. let's go to the new match. All right, so this is gonna be very interesting here. This is Sinia Kova, who's a youngster from, I think, the Czech Republic, taking on Venus. Okay, now I want you to watch Venus's return of serve here. On this for Venus won the early on in the match. It's two love to Venus. Now watch what she does on this return. Obviously, this is on red clay. Look where she is. Oh, freeze it. Look at her position. What do you think, Liliana? She moves way in, right? Okay, so even though this is clay, she knows she's gonna be aggressive. Oh, look what she did. All right, let's watch that again. Missed the first serve. Watch where she hits this return. Let's see if she goes for the line. Didn't go for the line. Did she hit a winner? Yeah, okay. So the steps are, so let me explain the steps a little bit of this. You start playing tennis at somewhere between the ages of four and eight or nine. You try to find 
certain basics to allow you to hit the ball reasonably well, getting yourself in balance, in position, good footwork, good backswings. You work your way up to a point where you start to hit serves and learn how to hit returns. And subsequently, through all this time, this is months, years, you eventually start to figure out how to be aggressive or more aggressive on a return of serve, as an example. You learn to hit it a little bit flatter. You learn to hit it with a little more angle. You learn to hit it with a little more spin. And so eventually, you know, Venus Williams happens to be six foot one and a half inches. So she's got a wingspan that's bigger than most, you know, a lot of male players and certainly almost all female players. So the kick serve, for example, especially a second serve that doesn't have a lot on it, particularly on a slower clay court, she's going to be able to handle. So that allows her to move forward. But you need to sort of develop timing over a long This isn't something where you walk up and decide I'm going to take someone's serve and rip a winner up the line. This is a process that you know, we're trying to instill on our young students so that they understand. You know, when I was younger, at your age, I couldn't serve in volley. I, any, I don't know if any of the parents have ever seen me play when I was younger, but I like to be aggressive and attack and try to take the ball early and serve in volley. And that wasn't something I could do at 12. And I understood that, and I had to sort of develop my game and wait till I grew up a little bit more to allow myself, finally, when I got to be around 18 and went to Wimbledon for the first time, where the courts were more advantageous for that, and allowed me to start to do something I for, felt more comfortable with. So this is sort of like a long-term process, and there's got to be some fun with this. You know, we don't want you to sort of feel like, uh, you know, it's, it's unpleasant or you're not having a good time. We want you to be on the court understanding that this is a process that takes a long time. And eventually all this stuff uh, that we've been telling you here hopefully will click in and will become more natural. And your mind will start to make decisions more quickly based on what the scenario is at that time. And that's why you have to try to develop all types of different shots. If you're a one-trick pony, where you're going to hit every ball hard and try to hit through everybody, well, you know, it's going to catch up to almost every single person. Because even if it's, you hit hard and you're hitting it pretty well, you'll be predictable. And you'll be able to have some success when you're younger and it will catch up to you. So it's extremely important that you learn to develop alternatives, you know, different ways. There will be a couple of points coming up where we'll show you, not with Venus in this particular match, because she saw very quickly that this girl's second serve was a liability. And she's, a, she's an aggressive player, as, as well as her sister. You're, we're talking about two of the greatest, Serena's the, the greatest player that's ever lived, and Venus isn't far behind. So we're showing you at a level where, you know, it becomes sort of second nature. But even for them at a certain point, you know, when they were kids, it wasn't like they walked out and every single ball was a winner. Or they intimidated their opponents. And, you know, you, you do that sometimes. Um, I remember many times when I was younger, uh, try to stand in close like we're showing. Well, what was I hoping would happen? I'll tell you what I was hoping would happen. They double fall, so I didn't have to hit a point shot. <laughs> and then I go, ah, if they had hit it in, I would have hit a winner anyway. I would have attacked them and it would have been over. But I was like, you know something, it's okay. I'll take the break. I don't even have to hit a shot because that makes it easier. So it pays dividends in different ways. You know, this game is, you know, as much mental as it is physical, especially when you get to the professional level. Well, the other thing I want to talk about on that return for Venus, and John's 100% right, which is her balance is so good. So even at your guy's age, um, you're not necessarily going to hit a clean winner on a return, but what you're going to try to do is let the ball come to you. A lot of times when we say to the kids, try to take the ball a little earlier, they run forward, right? And they sprint forward and they lose their balance. So what I want you to watch as we show that point again is that it does, does Venus like rush forward to the ball or does she you know she moves in close but watch how she just waits for the ball to come to her so she's very much under control she's just waiting she just turned her body she turned her upper body and she didn't rush forward so she was very much under control let's go to the next point it's gonna be another second serve here 
The girl's up 40, 15. You, you, you can rest assured she's not wanting to hit second serves against Venus, you know, and so that adds to the stress level. So there's another one. Let's show it again. So again, let's, fabulous. Let's 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 slow it down here when she's just about to hit it. So let's freeze it, Perry, as just as Venus is about to hit it. Now watch how she just very calmly just moves a little bit out of the way of the ball. It's coming right into her body. So freeze it there. So see the the the, the girl knows that Venus is going to be aggressive. So she's worried. So she's saying, "Oh well, I'm going to try to serve it right into her body." So she can't take a big swing. So Venus just look look at her position. She's got her left leg planted. She's not moving forward. She's just waiting and she's just gonna kind of very subtly move out of the way. Okay, let it go. Watch. She's gonna move. She just took one little move. Right? And then she was in, in position to uh be aggressive on that one. Let's go to the next well, one. Well, just before we go to okay. that, this is, I think that you get a pretty good indication, particularly against better players. And this is at any level, but obviously more so at this level. It is a lot easier to attack a second serve than it is a first serve. So to me, if you're playing like an incredible returner, such as a Venus Williams or a Kerber, or whoever else it is, to me, especially as you're learning and trying to deal with this, I would try to take a little something off the first serve and get a much higher percentage of first serves in because it's the, the opponent is less sure of what you're going to do and at, less pay, at what pace it's going to come at them. Because you can hit a, well, in the professional level, you know, that can be a, in the men's game, a 40, 50 mile an hour difference. In the women's, it could be 30 to 40. You know, that's a big difference. Because, you know, if you take a second serve and miss that, the point's over. So you want to make sure you don't double fault. So this is why it, you know, the strategy of it is, is, is so important as well. All right, next point. Wow. Oh, she delivers. All right, let's watch. The ball landed right inside. Let's watch, watch this again. Watch this again. All right, freeze it there. Okay, so as John was saying, she's got good good reach, right? She's reaching with both hands, but is is her lower body under control? She basically just took a she didn't really didn't even move her legs, so she bent her outside leg a little bit. All right, let it go through. Oh, she delivers. So you think that's ball an, you, right you, think, you think that's an easy shot? No, that's like John was saying, that takes years and years and years of <coughs> practice and balance and training to be able to hit that. Well, that one was a first serve. Venus now did, didn't take as big a backswing on that serve. She used the pace of her opponent on that serve. And she generated almost as much pace as she did on this, the other second serves when she hit the winner. So that was a smart adjustment in her part. And then you can imagine this girl as she's switching sides officially panicking. Because she just did, tried to do what I said she should do, which is take something off, and the person, Venus, still ripped a winner. So I got a feeling this is going to be one way traffic for Venus, if I had a guess. <laughs> yeah, I think you might be right. Let's see the next one. See the score yeah. of the next one. Oh, it's 5 1 now. You were right. God, I must have seen this. <laughs> All right, next point. Well, oh, that's it. All right, let's see that one again. Let's see that one again, because watch. You got a question, Liliana? Go ahead. What's your question? Oh, before the ball fell down, she just turned around. Who did? Venus. She turned around? Yeah. She wanted to say hello to her sister. <laughs> you think she thought it was a winner? She, I think she just thought it was going out. She thought it was going out. Well, let's watch it again, let me say. I mean, after she has to return? Yeah. Right here? Oh, she knew it was going out. Yeah. Oh. She, and she went forward after that. That's another thing. You, you, when she went to hit the return, she wasn't thinking, I'm going to go to the net. Right? But as soon as she hit it, she saw what a good shot it was. So then she decided to move into the net just in case the other girl got it back in the court. She probably would have had a pretty easy volley. Okay? Any questions before we move on to the next match? comments or questions. All right, let's go to the next one.
This is going to be Sam Stozer and Karen Canapi. Now this is um, interesting because this match was very close. The first set was won by the well, Kanap who's serving, and Stozer won the second set in a tie break. Well, let's see where we pick it up. We're going to go back. No, this is the first game. Here we go. And da gibt's dann spektakuläre Punktgewinne. And if you can translate this, you get bonus points. Spektakuläre Fehler. You can tell us what language that is. What language? French? No, I don't think so. No. <laughs> German, there you go. Yeah. All right, let's watch this one again. So now remember, this is Clay Court. Clay Court. He's going to miss the serve. And uh, da gibt's dann spektakuläre Punktgewinne, aber auch immer wieder, weil sie so ein hohes Risiko gibt. Let's watch how Stozer moves before, as the ball goes up in the air. Watch. That could be three languages, actually. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So now, why was that such a good return? Second serve, yeah. Hey. Right. Yes. She's got a. She's got a. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Sorry. She was balanced. Yep. She actually had a different approach, which was to step back. You know, she's got a more extreme grip, and she likes it to come down a little bit more. She's not as confident taking that early. And maybe Knapp's uh, second serve is a little, she's taller than the girl we were just watching, so her second serve is a little better. So she's less liable, that is Stoser, and less confident. So she likes to sort of step back, wait for it to get a little lower, and use that extreme spin to find the angle. And that can be just as successful. And that's like sort of the point mm -hmm. of being able to develop a number of different potential returns. That's why it's good that we get to get you all on clay sometimes. Right? Very important. Very important. So we're lucky to have both court uh, services. Yes. That technique she used where she moved over mm -hmm. while the ball toss was up again. Right. Is that can that ever be counteracted at the pro level? Can, can the server actually adjust while the ball is up in the air? The serve? It's very, very rare that you would see a server, even if out of the corner of the eye they saw her moving to run around in, to hit a forehand, be able to adjust that. Because number one, you don't want a double fault. And this is sec uh, oh, was that a first? That was that a second. Was, that serve. was a second serve. Yeah. yeah. So uh, that is, you know, once you've gone up and you've committed to like what you want to do there, that would be highly unusual and mostly counter, almost always counterproductive. To, oh, I, I think the only guy I've ever seen that could actually change his shot or decision as the ball's dropping is Roger Federer. He's the only guy seen capable of sort of like you, knew, you thought he was going to go, f you know, down line and he'd do something a little different, like just shockingly good. But that's not, you know, that is so far down the line as one person in the history of tennis that I've seen capable of doing that. But that's a good question because I think what, what would happen was would be the server would be thinking about it for the next points. So, but I think John's right. She wouldn't be able to do it in, in that point, but she would notice, oh, she's looking. So maybe she tries to hit some second serves wide so that to make her not to the look to do her. Let's watch it one more time as she moves moves around. Und mit der Vorhand. Und uh, da gibt's dann spektakuläre Punktgewinne, aber auch immer wieder, weil sie so ein hohes Risiko geht. Spektakuläre. Spektakuläre. So she steps around. Yep, can I keep going? Yep, let it go. Yep, all right, next point. And also, you know why angles work better on clay? Because the court's more slippery. I mean, you got to keep that in mind too. You know, it's not that easy to stop and start. So shots, angles generally, and pulling people off court is going to be even more effective. I mean, because you have to see, for example, do you two slide on a clay court? Well, that's something that takes yeah. years to develop also. And you know, it didn't take them years. They did well, right they're away. different. Yeah. You know, they, uh, I, I wasn't, yeah. didn't realize how quickly they yeah. had learned that. All right, let's go to the next. My step apologies. All right, so let's look at the score now. So the Kanap who's serving, she won the first set, and she broke serve in the set, first game. So she's up one love. And now it's deuce. So would you say this is a pretty important point? 
Pretty important point, right? So now she's going to... For Stoser. For Stoser. It's a second serve now. So let's see what she does. From the last 24 Stunden drin. That's sieht man auch. Okay, so to your question earlier, she she tried to make tried to make that serve a little bit wide. She didn't really hit her spot because, as John noted, it's a second serve, so she doesn't want to hit it too close to the line. And Stozer took advantage. She wants to hit it close to the line. We all want to hit it on the line if we could every single time, but you don't want to take that type of risk, particularly for her being up a set in a break. So she's thinking. Look, I'm going to want to beat my last thing. Well, that was the last thing we talked about. My last seminar was not beating yourself. So she's thinking, look, I'm in a good position. You know, that Stoser was, was wants the forehand. She's able to take advantage there. All right, next point. Okay, so Knapp still up a break. It's 2-1. 30-15. That's Stoser. Now she's in the other side of the court. So... All right, let's freeze it right. Well, let's let me see Stozer's position. Hello. Oh. Where did she go, Ava? She she ran around pretty early, right before this serve. Even so, she obviously thinks she knows where the serve's going to go. Now she so she, has she been paying attention during the match of what's going on? She has, right? Is it like harder for like? Yeah, that would be a little harder. That's why she prefers clay. Stozer likes it. The ball, the ball comes up kind of high. The only time it's at a disadvantage is if it skids off the line, like you said. Right. That's when it is, but that doesn't happen that often. But generally, that's where she's had her best results. So, let's, so look at her position, and she's she's already turned, ready to hit a forehand, right? She's already lined up. So let's let it roll. Oh. Now again, where did she, where did, what part of the court did she hit that towards? What? Inside out. Inside out, cross court, right? So there's another forehand cross court on the return. Was it aggressive? Was it over the low part of the net? Was it into more, a bigger section of the court? Okay. But let's also keep in mind that Stoser's had one of you know one of the best forehands in the game for quite a few years in the uh, in the women's game, and as well as the fact that her best success is on clay, and her biggest weakness is her backhand. So she's like, I'm gonna you know for most people, if you notice where we showed you where she's standing, there's a lot of open court there, a lot of open court for the opponent. So you better hit a good return from there, or you're going to be in trouble. So. Again, that's years of you know her building up her belief and her confidence and success with the forehand that says you know I'm I, I'm going to go out that far out and I'm still going to hit a as shot good enough that they're just not going to just take it up the line and I'm I'm toast. So you've got to even she has to be you know determined. Am I going to hit a good enough shot, a big enough ball to make it worthwhile for me to stand that far off the court? All right, let's see the next point. This will be in this next point. Yeah. You can see why, what, and you can answer why we showed this. The 4 3 1, is that it? Yeah, 4 3. Yeah. 30 15. Big, big point. So, Knapp, if she can hold here, she's just a game away from what do you winning think? the match. Stop it, stop it, Perry. What, what do you think happens? Second serve, she's up four, 6 4, 6 3, 4 3, 30 15. What do you think, Sasha? Keep trying to go to her back end. Show it. Let's see. Double fault. Double fault. Did she try to go to the back end? Yes. Well, look where Sos are standing. Do you think that the previous forehand Stoser that we saw ends up winning the match? What do you think? What's your vote? Stoser ends up winning. Uh, let's show the next highlight. Wow, that's the last of the. Oh, that's the last one? The last one just gives us the score here. 
Oh, yeah. oh here's four, two. Yeah. Oh, we don't get the point. Okay. So what happened, what we're trying yeah. to show there is that um, Stoser sort of stuck with the game plan, which was using her best shot. Eventually, it started to pay more dividends and got to uh, Kanepi, where eventually she started to, you know, maybe take a little bit too much of a chance on that particular point that allowed Stoser to get back in and eventually win it. But as you can see, it was very close. It was a second set tie break. And I'm sure it's a match yeah. she thought she should have won. Maybe one of those times with that use in which is why it's important for everyone to develop a slice serve. Had this girl had a little bit better slice serve or more belief, she might have tried to slice it to Stosis forehand as she was being, you know, going off the court and when you would have been wow, that would have been an ace. And then maybe she wouldn't have been going over so far if she knew that her opponent could hit the serve down the middle, right? In the ad court. So let's go back to that point again. So, okay, let's get ready for the second serve. This is the first miss. All right, so let's freeze it as she's just about to hit it. Okay, freeze it. So do you think if, as John said, do you think if, if Knapp had a lot of variety on her serve, whereas Stozer thought, well, she might hit a kick serve to my backhand, or she can also hit the serve right down the middle to the tee, right? To On the, the second lower serve, part of, the, of net. the net. But by this point in the match, she's determined that she doesn't think she can. So that's why you can see her let, uh, let it go. Oh, oh, she took another step. See so yeah, she's moving to her look where she's moving. The ball, the ball hasn't even been hit. The ball is still in the air. Okay. And there's the double fall. So that's why we do all those drills to try to get you to do even shots that you're not comfortable doing now. Because if you can start to practice them now, over time, it takes a lot of time, you might be able to hit all those serves. So if you were Sam Stoser, you played like her, my advice would be, at this, especially when you're younger, this is part of this developing thing, that you would, let's say you hit the same forehand, that inside out forehand over the low part of the net, you wouldn't try to hit it as hard. What you would try to do was hit it higher, and you would try to hit it with some spin, but you know, not as hard. Higher and not as hard, because guess what? You're not as fast as Sam Stoser. You know, you're little. So you've got to work your way up to that. So you've got to think, like, if that person gets the ball back, I need some time to get back into the point. So you've got to decide what you're going to do. So to, and eventually, as you get taller and a little stronger, you'll start to hit that shot a little bit harder. Eventually, you'll start to try to hit one of those forehands up the line. If you, you know, maybe when you're up 40, love, take a little risk to keep them guessing. It's all about sort of, you know, trying to keep your opponent off balance. And that's something that um, I think that one of the big things that we want to do here at the academy is to try to do as much of that as possible to make the parents understand and, and the kids understand that this is an extremely mental and strategic game. And it's almost, dare I say, fun to be thinking, you know, in those ways. It makes the game more interesting to me. Um, there's often times where there's three, four, five different shots you can hit. You get a forehand, you can hit it flat, you can go angle, you can use a lob, you person come in, there's all different types of serves you can hit. You know, John Isner, or... Who will be here next week, by the way. He's coming to visit us. Really? Yeah. Wow. Uh, well, you want to see your guy serve, show up. <laughs> uh, but, you know, even though this guy's 6'10", He's got, I believe, the greatest serve in the history of tennis. Now, he's not as good as an athlete as, you know, Sampras and these other guys, other great servers. But he's got a phenomenal serve and a phenomenal motion. And he hits it five or six different ways. You know, it's not just flat serve, you know, flat, 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 thank you very much. I mean, he'll hit a short angle. The same thing in return. Imagine trying to return John Isner's serve. Mm. Talk you think that. you got it tough now? <laughs> yes. I think the ball would go through 
It would be through your strength. It might go over your head. It might go through your gut if if he hits it at you. If he hits a kick, sir. Do do we have any questions anyone would like to ask about About anything, anything, pretty much, before we... To your earlier point about these kids being small now and getting bigger gradually, like, what do you do? What do you think is a good approach in terms of the body, right? They're they're short. Their limbs are short. During the point, when they're competing during the course of a point, they're going to lose most points when they come to the next Mm -hmm. Very easy to pass or lob over. Yes. So, when should you start encouraging them in a competitive situation to try to? Well, that's a good question, and that's you know there is no answer for that. Um, it it it. Hopefully, the kids understand, and the parents more importantly, because the kids are trying to please them as well as themselves, perhaps more so. That this is again a process. You know, I was a guy again who served in volley, but I couldn't do it at 12. One way to be able to improve my volleying as a young kid was to play doubles because you're only covering half the court. So you're able to sort of place yourself in a position where you won't get burned, you you have a better chance to reach balls than you would. I was taught well very early on that especially when you're younger, what's the first shot you're going to see when you come to net? What are they going to do? Lob. 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 So you better work on your overhead. And so this is, you know, something to me, one of the best things I was ever, so I was constantly lobbing and hitting overheads. Um, now the game has evolved where, you know, I see kids, and this is part of why we did the return, the you know, serve and return are the two biggest shots in tennis at this particular time. So that's why we wanted to do a forum on returning because you need to play points and you need to sort of be in positions where you're hitting returns, a, a lot of returns, you know, a lot of times kids go out, or not just kids, adults, go out, you're at the base, God, I'm hitting the ball, great. Uh, it feels really good. And then you go and start to put, what happened? You know, I can't return, I can't do this. Well, because it's completely different and you're in a different situation. So as far as the volume, one thing that we've been trying to do to some degree, that's why we have less pressurized balls when you're younger, so that the ball's not kicking up. You know, you don't put CYO baseball kids at Yankee Stadium. You know, the, the field, you know, they never get past the pitching mound. So this is part of what tennis didn't get. And I think it hurt the sport that because the ball was being struck harder because of these rackets, little kids could hit it harder than they ever could before. It discouraged kids even further, even more so, to move forward in, in the volley. So it's a, it's a trick. There's a, definitely a fine line that we're trying to find, that wheelhouse where kids are comfortable enough. We certainly try to encourage with the points and games we play here, hey, this is practice. You've got to sort of work on that and you know you understand that it may not be as successful as you'd like it to be, but that'll pay dividends down the road. And there's times when you put yourself in a position, here's what I would say, don't come to net until you think there's an 80, 90% chance you're going to win the point. If you see them reaching, if they're two-handed and they're 12 years old and they're reaching, well, the odds are 99%, they're not going to hit the ball very hard. So there's a chance where that volley will be easier. So you start from that way to work your way up. And eventually, over the course of, again, decade, literally, you'll get more and more comfortable and more uh, capable of hitting volleys. We've been doing a lot of work with the continental grip this this fall especially um, I would say to encourage them to keep we encourage them to keep coming and practicing that in practice but I certainly wouldn't say to them if they're in a match situation you know just go to the net because the number one thing that you want them to try to do is to try to win so to John's point if they come to the net a lot they're usually when they're 10 or 11 9 they're gonna lose the point but if they have good technique and they keep practicing it, then gradually, you know, if they come, sometimes they might come to net twice. And then they'll probably lose both the points. And if the next time they come to net four times, but they win one. And so you just take those as positive steps. Um, But we're always focusing on improving that in practice. But in the match, I would say, don't get upset if they don't want to go to the net. Because I wouldn't want to go to the net if I knew I was going to lose the point. So they're smart. They're just being smart. The pros often, you know, the games change. We were, the, the, the courts were in far worse condition. There was more tournaments on grass. Uh, you needed to take shorter backswings. So the 
players understood that you had a better chance he hit in the air because you were, weren't going to get a bad bounce. And indoor courts were quicker. So the things happen where, you know, that favored the volleyer in a way. And then things shifted because people were attacking returns more because of the technology. And because it came back faster, play, a lot of players weren't even in position to volley. They weren't able to get to the position where the odds started to go up in their favor. So that was an, there's an adjustment in the professional level. Milos Raonicui was coaching uh, a couple of years ago. He won a lot of points just you know, hitting aces because he's got one of the great serves in history. So I would say to him, look, you're going to hold almost every time anyway, so why don't you, when you're up, especially when, I mean, I wanted him to do it more anyway, but if you're up 30, 40 love, why the heck aren't you serving in volley? Maybe take a little bit off it. There's the time, because the odds are 98% you're going to win your serve anyway. Maybe take a little off it, and you know, and you might get like a volley you can work, you know, and that builds your confidence so that when you really need to hit a volley. So it's all relative. You know, you start from a position at 10, 12 years old, well, Maybe um, watching doubles, for example. Why do you think the players stand so close to the net? Well, in large part, because their skills, they haven't learned the skills or the technique. So the closer, if you're right on top of the net, anyone can sort of hit a winner. So that's why they do it. They protect themselves. So you could do a little of that when you play doubles. You know, we encourage when the boys or girls are playing doubles, move a lot, you know, say just for the fun of it and for putting yourself in a position where you'll be successful trying to trying to do something different. Hey, I'm going to move and I'm going to be right on top of the net. The your partner could stay back. You know, a lot of pros stay back. That was unheard of when, when we grew up. No one stayed back on their serve. Well, now they do it all the time. So that allows you to sort of do some different things. At what time is it? Do we know? We're, we're, we're over six. We're over, we're over we're, six. The last couple. Of, when you have any yeah. more questions? Any more questions? We, we'll he, for him. No, Good. he may not leave. No. <laughs> last question or two, if anyone wants, before we go off to Sunday night dinner. You can see Caroline on her split, on her return serve, her split's a little, little hop. Mm -hmm. Maybe Ann, and you see Andy Murray take a step and then the hop. Mm -hmm. you recommend? Well, that's really uh, personal. You know, it depends what you're most comfortable with. You know, everyone's got their own sort of routine and what works. I, I, I wouldn't want to be in the air as a ball. You know, you got to make sure you're on the ground when you're split step. So sometimes people delay, do it a little late and they're in trouble. But, you know, that's all about, I used to like to move forward, you know, be ready and then have my weight moving forward. Others do it differently. It depends on the person. There's no right or wrong. Both those are tremendous. Uh, Murray's one of the great returners in history. Uh, he likes to stand back. It gives a, a different look, you know, thinking, okay, I've got this angle, and then he's four feet further inside when the serve is struck, and that's a different angle for the server. So you have to almost assume he's going to do that. You don't know 100%, but he does it almost all the time. So others are different. You know, Djokovic is amazing. He can sort of do anything he wants. So that's, there's, there's no set way of doing that. You don't want to be too, too, get too high. He's in most of the players now in the return are a little, trying to stay a little lower to the ground so they can, they can push off either direction quickly. If, if, if you look at sprinters, you know, they, you know, Usain Bolt, you know, he's not up, you know, he's like this, you know, when they spring out of the starting gate, you know, they're all like crouching like tigers and, you know, that's the best way to get to full speed as quickly as possible. And that tennis is a lot of really little steps, you know, two, three, a lot of cases only a couple steps, but that has to be a burst, you know, in some cases. Last question or two? All right. All right. Have, Enjoy, a, have a good Sunday. Thank Thanks you for, for coming. coming. Thank you.